All right, so if a random variable x has density function f, we want to compute the distribution function of x squared. Wait, distribution function? Hmm. Oh, right. Distribution function then differentiate to find its uh, density function, of course. Okay. Um, and then we, of course, plug in a known um, density function and we'll end up with a another density function. So anyways, let's go ahead and do this. X, so x has density function f. So we know that the probability that x is less than or equal to x is the integral from negative infinity to x of f of y dy. Um, I'm pretty sure whenever we have density functions we have to assume that they're um, continuous. So anyways, um, note that x squared is less than or equal to x if and only if you just take the square root and you end up with negative the square root of x is less than or equal to capital X which is less than or equal to the square root of x. So the probability that x squared is less than or equal to x, well certainly this is going to be zero if, well yeah, I mean, if x is negative, then um, this inequality doesn't even hold. So this is going to be zero if x is strictly less than zero, and probability that x squared is less than or equal to x, I'll just say else. So if it if x is greater than or equal to zero, then this probability is just well. You could take um, well. Basically, what you end up having is the probability that x squared is less than or equal to x. This is the probability that x is between negative x and no negative square root of x and square root of x, um, which I guess you could write as like. You can write it as like integral from um, you can write this as the probability that x is less than or equal to square root of x minus the probability that x is less than or equal to negative square root of x. But just for simplicity, I'll jump ahead and write this as the integral from negative square root of x to the square root of x of f of y d y. All right, so that's our distribution function. So if g is the density function of x squared, then the integral from so the probability that um, x squared is less than or equal to x is going to be the integral from negative infinity to x of g of y dy, which is equal to this integral, uh, the integral from negative square root of x to square root of x of f of y dy, which I'm going to write as the integral from negative from 0 to x of f of y dy minus the integral from 0 to minus the square root of x of f of y dy. And in fact, because the probability that x squared is less than or equal to x is 0 if x is negative, we can just write this as the integral from 0 to x of g of y dy. You could put that as a separate step if you wanted to, or you don't have to, or you could just assume that um, g is zero between negative infinity and zero. But in any, in any case, you get this. And the reason that we have this is that this makes it easy to take the derivative. Um,
So now, differentiating yield, and we just use the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 0 to x of g of y dy is just going to be g of x. So this is going to be equal to, now here we actually have to use the chain rule because we're not, we're taking the derivative of the integral from 0 to the square root of x of f of y dy. So we're not taking the um, integral from 0 to x. We're taking the integral from 0 to square root of x. So the way you can think of it is you can think of f of x is the integral from 0 to x of f of y dy. And we are trying to compute the derivative with respect to, to x of f of square root of x, which is of course going to be f prime at square root of x times the derivative of the square root of x. So f prime at the square root of x, well, the derivative of f with respect to x, this function it, um, in this form is just going to be f of x by the fundamental theorem of calculus. But we plug in square root of x, so we start with f of the square root of x. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the square root of x. So that's going to be um, 1 over whatever the easiest way to write this is. So 1 over 2 square root of x. So it's going to be 1 half times x to the power of minus a half. OK, and so then we subtract. And then here we do the same thing, except we are doing the integral from 0 to minus square root of x. And so when we do this, we end up with f of minus square root of x. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of negative square root of x. So that's going to be minus 1 over 2 square root of x. And so then we combine this, and we end up with, what do we end up with? We end up with... So we're going, to end, we're going to have f of square root of x, and then the minuses are going to cancel out. We're going to get plus f of minus square root of x, and then we've still got the 2 root of x in the denominator. Okay, and that's the first part of this exercise. And then for the second part, we just... Um, Suppose x is standard normal, so when f of x is equal to, so this is going to be 2 pi to the minus 1 half times the exponential from of minus x squared over 2, then g of x is going to be here. I'm going to erase this and then continue down here. g of x equals, so let's see here, we're going to take f of square root of x, so that's going to be 2 pi to minus 1 half exponential. Now we're squaring the square root of x, so we're going to get minus x over 2 plus, then again, 2 pi to the minus 1 half, and then Now we're squaring negative square root of x, so square root of x will become x, and then we squared the negative and it becomes positive, so we just end up with exponential of minus x over 2 again. So we have this whole thing, and we're dividing by 2 root of x. And so, let's see here, we've got a 2 to the 1 half. Hmm... Oh, right, okay, so because we've got two of these things being added together and they're the same thing, it's just two 
we get a factor of 2 when we add them together, and that will cancel with the 2 in the, in the denominator. So we'll end up with just the exponential of minus x over 2, and then we're dividing by, let's see here, we've got square root of x in the denominator still, but we've also got that fa common factor of 2 pi to the minus 1 half, so we end up with the square root of 2 pi x. And that is the density function of something which I guess is called the chi-square distribution. And of course, the chi-square dis distribution is going to be defined to be 0 when x is negative. And what about when x is 0? I assume it's just going to be 0. Um, yeah, that would make sense. Alright, and so yeah, this is how we work with the density functions, and so we have to do a little bit of calculus, but once you get used to it, it doesn't look like it's too difficult. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to this exercise, and so we are now done.